Hello friends, welcome again to this session on elements of Indian mathematics. In the previous session, we saw a proof of Pythagoras' theorem as mentioned in Indian Sulva Sutras. In today's session, we are going to discuss another very interesting uh, feature of Indian mathematics where uh, it has been mentioned or the process has been given to find out the, the area of a square which is n times the area of any other given square. So, uh, what was the use of uh, this particular process or construction method? Basically, as we discussed in the previous few sessions, uh, uh, there were methods described for designing and constructing fire altars for performing rituals in post-Vedic period. Now, in this particular session, uh, we are going to discuss that method which describes that if you, a given fire altar which has a square interface uh, or a square cross section of let's say one particular area now if we want to design another fire altar whose cross section area is n times that of the given square or the previous uh, or the other fire altar okay so this is what we are going to discuss and in the process we'll also learn this particular method gives us a process of finding out root of any number geometrically and that's very very interesting so let's begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the construction here in this GeoGebra software. And what uh, what is the first step? So let us first define the size of the square. Okay, so I'm going to define it using a slider. And since the side cannot be negative, so let it start from one. Okay, so I'm going to start or take the size as one. You can take uh, uh, lesser value also. You can start from zero also, no problem. So let us start from zero. And this is where uh, the side of the square is defined. Now, let us now also define a number which is of or let's say the factor by which we want to multiply the area of the given square. So, let's say that number is n and uh, I am again defining another variable n. And this is where or this is the variable uh, which is the factor by which I want to multiply the given area and find the new square. Okay, so this is n and then later on you will also see that we intend to find out the square root of this n itself. So first thing is we have to draw a square of side a. So there are multiple roots of or multiple ways of doing it. You can use construction through circles and all or I am adopting a method of ge uh, coordinate geometry. So I will be finding out the vertices of the four square and then I will be just joining the vertices. So let's say the first is 0, 0. Okay, so this is the first vertex A. The second vertex B can be given as um, A comma 0, isn't it? A comma 0. So this is B. C can be A comma A. So let's say this is A comma A comma A. And the fourth one can be 0 comma A, isn't it? D. So D is let's say 0 comma A. Fantastic. So this is or these are the vertices which are going to be joined to make a square. So let's say A, B, C and D, A, B, C, D, right? So this is my square of side A, right? So you can see if I increase A, the size of the square goes up and down, right? So let us fix it at 1, okay? Now, I am going to give you a word of caution that now the construction is going to be little, you know, cluttered. So don't worry, I'll try to make it as decluttered as possible, but just bear with me on this. So let me just shift this point A here and uh, I can, uh, I am the second step now is to draw a isosceles triangle. So first I will show you uh, through a rough drawing and then we will construct using GeoGebra. Okay, so let us say I am going to draw a isosceles triangle like this. So what are the sides? The sides are and later on we are going to prove this as well. So don't lose hope. So let us say if this was A, then we are going to draw a isosceles triangle with base n minus 1 A. Okay, this is the base and with the other two sides as half times n plus 1 A. Okay. So there are two sides with the half n plus one a. So the construction is very simple. So you draw a line segment with uh, with length n minus one a. Then taking let's say this point is p and this point is q, taking p as the center, 
and the length of uh, radius being uh, half into n plus 1 a, we have to draw an arc. And similarly, uh, from q as well, with the same this you know uh, radius, we have to draw another arc intersecting the previous one at let's say point r. And this triangle PQR will be our desired isosceles triangle. Okay. And then uh, how do we get the required new area? We will see later. Okay. So let me just put it here. And now keeping that rough diagram in mind, let us now draw n minus 1 a base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a circle with center a and radius as n minus 1 a. Simple n minus 1 times a. Fantastic. So, but you know, I don't see uh, here. Okay. So, let me do it once again. So, A is the center and radius is N. Okay. So, here N is 1. So, obviously, the radius is 0. So, let me take uh, N a little bit higher. Okay. So, you can see. Yes. So, let us say I am taking 1.8. N is 1.8. So, hence, now you can see the circle to be appearing over there. But I don't need the circle. I just need this point. Is it? So, let's say this point is E. And I can now uh, switch off uh, this circle. I don't need this. Okay. Now I have a point. The base is ready. AE is the base. And I need to now draw two other sides here. As you can see on the right side, I have to just uh, do uh, the two sides. And what is the length? Length is half n plus 1a. Let's draw the circle once again. So from A as center, radius being 0 0.5, that is half. And then n plus 1 and into a, is it? So, this is my, yeah. So, I got the first circle with center a. I have to repeat the same process using center as e and then 0 0.5 again, n plus 1 times a. Perfect. So, here is my point of intersection. So, right, this is the, uh, now if I just do away with these circles. So let's say I don't need these. So let me just hide them. Okay. So I don't need them anymore. So F point is what I was looking for. And let me join or let me draw a polygon. So A, E, and F is the required isosceles triangle. Okay. So now that the isosceles triangle is done, what's next? So let me just switch it off. Let me delete everything here. And now this is the isosceles triangle. You will be astonished to know that if I join, uh, or let's say drop a perpendicular from F on to this line. So this is the perpendicular bisector of side AE. And let us name this point G. Now FG represents actually. So now if I, if I, FG represents the side of the square, which was our target square. So now if I complete the square using side FG, then the new square is going to be n times in area than the original square. So that's that's the beauty. Okay, now let me just, uh, uh, so how do I draw the square? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a few circles. So don't worry. So this is one circle. That means this point here is another vertex of the square, isn't it? So let me just, you know, this is another vertex. From here again, I can draw another circle or rather I can draw a, uh, you know, circle from here and with the same radius. Okay. So let me draw a circle uh, from F passing through G. Okay. And H passing through G. Right. So why did I do that? All these circles intersect, you know, at the vertex of the given square or the required square. Now I can again switch off or hide all these. Uh, circles. I don't need them anymore. Okay. So my construction is over. I hope you understood. So basically from FG as side, I drew some circles of equal side, equal radius FG on the three sides and I am now getting the desired polygon. So this is my desired polygon FG, which is a square. So FGHI. Okay. FGHI. So this is my square. Now, interestingly, the area of this FGHI will be n times that of A, B, C, D. Understood? So, area of FGHI square is n times that of A, B, C, D. How is that? We will, you know, uh, do it in the proving section. Right now, this is what. So, you can validate by 
just measuring the area. Let's measure the area. So clearly the area of this one is ABCD is 1 and this one is 1.8. So you can see N was 1.8. So the area of FGHI is 1.8 times that of 1. Okay. So now you can, you can imagine if ABCD is 1, then FG, FG is so 1.8 root over 1.8, isn't it? If the area of FGHI is 1.8 here, then one side will be root over 1.8. So basically GF represents root over 1.8. Let's measure GF to understand that. So if I measure the uh, distance of FG, you can check. This comes out to be 1.34 and 1.34 actually will give you or the square of 1.34 will be approximately 1.8, right? So this is what uh, is the theorem. So basically what did we do? So in, in the ancient time, what was the need for all this? So they had a fire altar whose uh, top view would appear like ABCD. And then there were, uh, there were rituals wherein you have to draw the or you have to construct fire altars whose uh, area will be n times of uh, the given area ABCD. So if ABCD is one square unit and n is 1.8, let's say if you want to go 1.8 times or you know you can change the n, we will see, we will be seeing by changing n what impacts does it have. Then you can always find out with this method the area of a square which is n times that of the original square. And, and if you consider a to be 1, then you will be able to find out the square root as well, isn't it? So let's say if I don't touch a, if I change n, so let us take n equals to 2. So you can see now the area is 2 times the previous one or the original one. And you can clearly see fg length over here is 1.41, which is approximately root over 2, isn't it? So this is a very interesting uh, method of finding the square root of any number using geometry. Now let us also uh, increase. So if, if I increase n beyond 2, it's not uh, giving me any result. Why? Because uh, you will see in the proof, uh, the base is, and anyways, I sh showed it to you that base was n minus 1a. So in this case, if I increase n, the n minus 1a goes, you know, uh, beyond this ab. So hence your construction is not visible here. So if I increase a, let's say, so let's say this is uh, 2, a is 2, and let me just zoom out and then uh, let's say if I have n so you can now see as I reduce uh, you know so you can now see that if this area ABCD is 4 then this is 1.8 times of 4 is 7.2 and the new area FGHI is 7.2. So this was this is mentioned in Katyayan's uh, Sulba Sutra and again it's an in, in, in ancient Indian mathematics and uh, we can see that this is another very interesting way of finding root over any number using geometry. So now let us go to the proof of this particular theorem.